All right, let's take a look at the class example for our purchases and our purchases returns journal. So we're still going to use Nasipo and her best skincare company during 2013. She is a VAT vendor. All the amounts given are quoted VAT inclusive. Again, don't take this for granted. Make sure that you're very comfortable with whether or not you're dealing with inclusive or exclusive amounts. This information, her purchase notes started at P037. And her purchases returns not note started at PR024. Why do we do this? Why do we need to do this? The reason that we, we do this is we need a separate numbering system when you are doing the books for someone, when you are purchasing. As you'll see when we take a look at the transactions, if you're buying something from someone else, they're not interested in your document numbers. They're only interested in their own. So their own inventory documents are going to follow, are going to be numbered from one carry on and going to be consecutively numbered. But whenever you buy from them, you cannot dictate to them what their invoice numbers to you are going to be. So if we want to keep track and we want to follow through our purchases, what we'll generally do is we'll create a purchase order or a purchase note and we will keep track of our purchases so that we can put those two together and we can always track them and we can always trace them. So you'll generally find that we'll create some kind of P or PN, a purchase or a purchase note or something. And you'll find we'll use that to record the item instead of the actual invoice document numbers from our suppliers because we'll never actually be able to tell, we'll never be able to follow them up and they're not our numbers. So in an exam, just watch for that. Um, if they give you no indication of the, the numbers at all of our numbers, then use the numbers from the supplier. Otherwise, they may tell you we use purchase notes and these are the numbers we should start with. So let's take a look at this. On the 6th of November, she purchased goods on credit from Clarity for 513 invoice 043. So again, this is on credit, which means it's not going to go into our cash payments journal. So this is our, our purchases journal from Clarity for 513 and our purchases notes starts at P037. So let's just make sure we put this in correctly. So my purchases journal, again, please make sure that we do our headings properly. So my purchases journal, again, I'm abbreviating because my handwriting is a pain, <laughs> November 13, and our numbering of our folio, PJ1, making sure that our document is numbered properly, our journal is numbered properly. We're starting with P037 and it is on the 6th and the details we are buying from Clarity. How much? 513. Right. Remember 513 represents 114 percent of the amount. So 513 divided by 114 times 100 because I want to know exactly how much my purchases are gives me 450 and 513 divided by 114 times 14 will give me my 63 will be my actual VAT amount. Again, you can check this by saying if we take the VAT exclusive amount 450 and say 450 times 14 percent will give you 63. Add those two together and you'll find that your VAT inclusive is the same. If you're ever a little bit worried about whether or not you're getting the right numbers, just make sure you can work your VAT calculation both ways back and forth and then at least you know you're dealing with the right number. So that's item number one, transaction one done. 342 rands purchases was made on account, again not a cash purchase or not a cash transaction, from Perfect Skin. <clears throat> So on the 13th, and we follow our number in order, so we now use P038, and this was from Perfect Skin. And it was for 342 Rand. Again, divided by 114 times 100 will give me 300 Rand, and my VAT is 40 two on that item. It's the second one done. Third one, Nosipa returned goods she had bought on credit to Perfect Skin for 114 Rand. So this is not immediately a cash item. So it's from Perfect Skin on the 19th. So we need to create a purchases returns journal. Again, I've given you the formats for all of these. Purchases returns.
journal for November 13, and this will be a PRJ1. So let's see the transaction that's going in there on the 19th. Uh, for 114 and remember my purchase received or my purchase return note is PR 024 so my document number PR <coughs> 024 and that is on the let me just check again on the 19th and that's to perfect skin and the amount was 100 and 14. Again, the same thing applies here. 114% of your amount is the creditor's control. We are returning 100% of the purchase and the receiver takes 14% on top of everything. So that leaves me with 100 rands worth of goods that I've actually returned and 14 rands worth of VAT. On the 20th, she purchased products on account from Skin and Hair. So on the 20th, 855 from skin and hair. Let's put that amount in before we forget. 855 from skin oof, and hair. And that was on the memory's terrible. That was on the 20th. And this we will now have as P039. Again, 855 times uh, divided by 114 times 100 is going to give us 750 oh, grief 750 and our vat on that would be 105. on the 23rd she returned products to skin and hair for 228. so we go to our purchases returns journal on the 23rd skin and hair we use the very next number, our PR025, and the amount 228 that we have returned, divided by 114 times 100, gives us 200, and our VAT is 28. So we've now covered, <clears throat> on the 23rd, on the 30th, she purchased more goods on credit from Clarity for 700 and. 41 rand so on the 30th again from clarity for 700 and 41 rand divided by 114 times 100 gives us 650 that gives us 91 and that obviously would be the next number in line which is p040 and that is our purchases journal and our purchases received journal. We've crossed off all our transactions. We've dealt with it. So prepare the purchases journal. I've done prepare the purchases returns journal. I've done. And now I need to go and post the totals and deal with the VAT. So I've done all of these. Let's just add them up and make sure that we're happy with our totals. If we add all of those up, we get 301 or we should get 301. We get 2150 and we get 245. One. If you have time and you're worried about the amount, you can take your VAT exclusive amount, because remember this is your exclusive amount, multiply by 14% should give you that amount, and if you add them together, it should give you that. And remember that's 2451. That doesn't really look like a one, does it? <laughs> All right. And then when we take our purchases returns journal, we've got 42 Rand over here, 300 Rand over here, and 300 and 42 over here again the same thing applies 300 times 14 percent is 42 300 plus 42 is 342 so everything checks out again watch the details watch the numbers watch your vat calculations and then let's go and actually post this journal and these journals to our ledger to our general ledger